Hey there, welcome to the latest episode of Hiker Homily. I'm out here on the foggy, misty, but still pretty beautiful Pixley Slough on the Atherton Road levee. Getting in some miles. Looks like I'll do anywhere between four and five today, depending on how things are feeling, and they're feeling pretty good so far. But what I really wanted to talk about was a hiker mindset. Or to be more exact, the hiker mindset that I have adopted after a couple of years of getting back into this hobby and realizing a few things. And I just wanted to share that because it may resonate with some of you. Some of you may be struggling with, you know what, I got into this hobby and I'm having some issues with it. And maybe it's because that mindset that you picked up at the early, like me, has to change a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So after retiring in very late December 2016 and <clears throat> looking around in early 2017 to get back into a hobby that I at one time did all the time and loved, um, hiking, backpacking, uh, I looked around and realized very quickly that some things had changed about my old hobby. Um, and not just gear-wise. Uh, obviously the gear had made amazing advancements. Things had become lighter and and uh, certain materials much more durable than they used to be but still lighter all kinds of things like that had changed um, but also the community itself had kind of changed and evolved into different ways back when i started it was backpacking you were a backpacker you backpacked um, whether you did it for two or three months to do an entire big trail like the uh, AT or the PCT or you went on overnights or two-nighters here and there in the mountains near you or the coastline near you you were a backpacker uh, you didn't have little subdivisions I mean they were there you had people who did exclusively just the long trails compared to overnights and stuff like that but they didn't walk around I'm a through hiker I'm a this I'm a that we were all backpackers um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the fact that we have these subsets. I understand how they evolve over time. But that was just one of the many changes. And so when I decided to get back into the hobby, and hey, it's one regret I have in life that I didn't do this big trail when I was young and really technically had the time, even though back then it didn't seem like I did. Uh, maybe I want to try one of these big trails. I start looking around. I am a history major, and so research is big for me. That's what I learned to do as a history major, is researching things. Uh, so I started looking around, but really, my research wasn't really as strong as I thought it was, because I got hooked up into the mindset of, if these couple of hikers I see on YouTube do it this way, then that's the way it's done for things like the PCT and other stuff like that. So I started to buy gear and train myself and prep myself to do it that way. And uh, for those of you who aren't psychic, newsflash, I failed utterly. <laughs> because it wasn't my way, just because I realized quickly that just because these folks do it this way, that's not really my way. So I'll get deeper into that with uh, some of the steps. Um, but I did want to approach that as that, that's, that was my initial mindset. When I got back into things, I was trying to motivate myself to do things in a certain way that ultimately um, weren't really a way that worked for me. But I was trying to shoehorn myself in there because, hey, this is what I've seen. This is what through hikers do. This is what people who do this particular thing do. They do it this way. So apparently that's the only way to do it, right? So I was trying to push myself into this box that I was not going to fit in. But that was my mindset. I got on these trails doing these kinds of training on these levee roads and things like that. And then later I got up into the hills near me to try and do some elevation work but I did, did it with the mindset of these people 
do 15 minute miles, they do 20 minute miles, even going uphill. So I have to get myself there. I have to be at a certain pace. I have to, I have to, I have to. A lot of have tos. Um, when really the only one putting the have tos up there was me. I was the one deciding what I had to do, uh, but had not really deeply researched why I thought I had to do it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the mindset change that I had over time after a couple of realizations and a couple of experiences on some different trails. So we're gonna go on to the first part, which is why you really should be doing this stuff, or at least why I'm really doing this stuff. And again, if it resonates with you, that's outstanding. Maybe you can pick something up from this. If it doesn't, maybe you will learn that there are other people on the trail that have different uh, methods than you do or needs than you do on the trail. But let's move on to part one. So number one for my new mindset that I started uh, last year after doing a lot of thinking and soul searching, have fun, have fun. Uh, sounds simple, right? But as usual, anything to do with human beings is never really that simple. Because what's fun to one person isn't fun to another person. And that's where we get into the term, hike your own hike. Again, I know I, I heard you guys, I could feel it. I could feel the eye roll. Oh, he used that term. The term is overused and misused. I did a whole hiker homily on that. It is indeed by many people in the hiker community. Completely misused, oftentimes overused but it is not completely useless, it does serve a purpose. It really does. Um, and I think that this is one of those purposes. Uh, in order to have fun on your hikes, you have to be doing the hike the way you are ready to do it and want to do it. You really do. So, have fun. Uh, for some people, that is crushing miles. Peak bagging, just hammering out 25 miles, uh, being gone away from home or family uh, and friends for five months while you hammer out this trail. And that's fine, that's good, do it. If that's where your fun is, then have that fun, man, go for it. If your fun isn't there, don't push yourself into that. Don't do that. Um, I'll, again, I'll get into reasons why when I get to step three, but for step one, have fun. And I discovered for me, having fun is being able to hike without the pressures of very strict time constraints. I don't mind little time constraints. Hey, you got to get this done in a day. You got to blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. Um, but I learned quickly at the Lost Coast Trail. I've mentioned it many times. Yes, the terrain on that trail was tough, but I've never been afraid of tough terrain. I don't mind doing elevation work that really challenges you and you're just dog tired when you're done. Um, as long as I can get to the top and have myself a little rest. The thing about the Lost Coast Trail that really pushed me into not having fun anymore is there are certain zones that that whole choice is taken away from you. You must do this zone at this pace, period, end of story, because if you don't, this entire zone is gonna disappear under the ocean at this time. <laughs> and that's the pressure of the Lost Coast Trail. Um, I did not enjoy that. And I'll be completely clear with you, the group I was with and how we did it, we never even got close to getting to that point. We were never like in the middle of a zone and the tide's already coming in and it's almost there and we have to, we never got to that point. We crossed these things quite easily in the time allotted. But just that pressure in the back of the head for me that said, you gotta do this in this time, you don't have a choice in the matter, um, bugged me. It sapped the fun out of it for me because it was just one of those things that compounded on top of the fact that I was walking on terrain that was very difficult to walk in, just sapped every strength out of you. You're sinking in the sand or the heavy gravel or you're boulder hopping for a couple of miles. 
on boulders that will move whenever they want to. Just tough stuff like that. That was bad enough. And then on top of it, you had this whole thing in the back of the mind is, yeah, you're doing this and it kind of sucks. So embrace the suck. But at the same time, oh, by the way, this whole thing is going to be under 10 feet of tidewater if you don't get out of here in a certain amount of time. And that just sucked the fun out of it for me. So that was one of the things that helped me realize that one of my prime motivators I need is to be able to have fun and not be pressured into hiking a certain way that I just don't want to hike. I've never been a fast hiker, even when I was a young man in really good shape, actually had ab muscles and everything. Um, I was not a fast hiker. I was not into that. I was out there my main motivation for beginning backpacking, as I said in my story when I talked about my first backpack trip, was it was an adventure. I had read about stuff like this, and I wanted to experience it. So I went for it. And, yeah. <laughs> um, having to rush through that wasn't, wasn't for me. I wanted to take my time. So that's the big one for me. It's just got to be fun. And for me, fun is not crushing a bunch of miles in a day in a certain amount of time. I've got to get this many miles before 10 o'clock. I've got to get this. It's just not for me. Now, if there's other people out there saying, but I love doing that. Good. That's the whole point. That's your hike. Do it. Have fun with that. Man, go for it. I'm just not one of those. So I find other ways to have fun. So there it is. Have fun. That's step number one. Number two, be realistic. Um, and really, that's a big one. That really is a big one. And I'm trying to think of a, a good example. Oh, I have a perfect example. For those of you in the hiker community who know who Second Chance is, Second Chance Hiker was a man who started out at over 300 pounds. Uh, I think close to 400 pounds. And he decided he was going to do the PCT because it's just something he decided to do. Now, right away, a bunch of you are like, well, that's not realistic. Actually, if you paid attention, because there was a bunch of people online who came up with that. Oh, this is a joke. This is ridiculous. If a guy like him can do the trail, then the trail's a joke too. And blah, 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 blah. Because I'm going to do a whole other hiker homily how the hiking community, at least online, most of these people don't have the guts to do that to people's faces. Uh, but online, oh, they're very brave and they just talk a bunch of crap. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. But a lot of crap talking online. But if you actually paid attention to what Corey, who is Second Chance Hiker, was doing, he did do it smartly and realistically. He understood that a man in his shape, his size, could not start that trail and just make a beeline for Lake Morena the first day. Boom! You know, jump in right away. Pull a 15, 20 mile first day. No, because what would have happened, and I think he understood that, is he'd push himself so hard, maybe get, maybe get to the 10th mile and decide he absolutely hated it. He hated the trail. He hated doing this. He was in a lot of pain. He may have injured himself. That would have been it. The hike would have been over. Done. So what Corey did realistically is he understood a guy in his shape is going to need to go at a different pace than everybody else who does that trail. Even guys like me who try to hope for 7 to 10 mile days, he wasn't going to be able to do that either. And he definitely wasn't going to be able to do like a lot of the others do. They start crushing 20 mile days right off the bat anyway. So he got a start date for January. Knowing full well he wasn't, if, if, if he was going to do the entire trail, he was not going to do it in the four to five months that most people do it in. Start date for January, and the first day he did three miles. Got to a camping spot, slept. The next day I think he did about three. And then I think there was some weather issues, and he got back on the trail after taking a quick zero for weather issues. And that's what he kept doing. Three miles here, or maybe a four miler. Eventually, he would push that to five. Eventually, that five became ten, and so on. He ended up doing well over a thousand miles on the trail. He did not do the entire trail, 
he ended up skipping certain parts for various reasons. And he, I think he intends to go back and, and hit them and stuff like that. But he did do well over a thousand miles on the trail. And eventually did do a couple of days where he was pushing 15, 20 mile days consistently because he did it realistically. He did not just jump right in craziness doing major miles um, just right off the bat, pushing himself too hard. Uh, so that's one of the biggest examples I can give for being realistic, if, uh, especially with me, just getting back into the hiking. Um, I'm a guy who used to go out, you know, five-night backpack trips all over, ranging all over the Sierras, up over ranges, tops of peaks, Basin Peak, Castle Peak, Devil's Peak, all over the place, get back there to Paradise Lake, all kinds of things like that. Um, when I got back into it, my first backpack trip, it's not going to be that way, and I knew it. I had to work my way back up to that, because it had been two decades since I had done any serious backpacking or any real hiking. I had been on little day trips with the family, fun little stuff that the kids could do and that we could do together, and those were great. I loved them, but they didn't get me in any kind of condition to suddenly just jump on the trail and do it. So, realistically... And that, how it hits me is with the Pacific Crest Trail. I decided, okay, if I'm going to do this, I waffled all over the place. And my wife would, would be a witness to this. Totally waffled. Originally, I'm going to do the whole damn thing. All right. That sounds unrealistic, so I think maybe I'm only going to do uh, the first little section of it. I'll do it in sections. All right, this. No, now I'm going to do it this way. Now I'm going to do it that way. I finally, last year, decided I'm going to do the desert. I want to do the whole desert section. That's a little over 700 miles. Right around 700 miles. Okay, even that proved not realistic for me. So, I've toned that down again to this year. I'm going to do even smaller chunks, but I'm going to do chunks. And I'm going to get out there and I'm going to have fun. Hey, that's step one, remember? So, step two, be realistic. Number three, three, research. And I don't just mean a lot of people are like, well, yeah, you know, when I go to buy a tent, I, you know, check this one, I check that brand, I look at the reviews. I'm not talking about gear and just that kind of stuff. That's a good thing to do, absolutely. I'll probably do a whole hiker homily on, on that when you're doing gear and stuff like that. Yes, do that kind of thing, yes. But the research I'm talking about is what I talked about at the very beginning. Do not get into that mindset that I had at the beginning that, oh, if I want to do such and such trail, I saw this person and this person, two people, out of all the hikers out there, do it this way. So therefore, that's how you got to do that trail. No. Research. Find out. Make certain that you know. Now we got wind coming. Um, that you know for sure that that's the only way to do that trail. Because when it comes to things like the Pacific Crest Trail, the AT, the CDT, all the big through hike trails, there's more than one way to do it. It does not have to be done. There's no law that says in order to do that trail, you must do it. Border to border, unbroken, straight path, do it. Um, no. You can do it in 10 mile chunks if you want to. You can do it in in a couple of thousand mile chunks. You can do it in 100 mile chunks. There are many ways to do the big trails and still do the trails, enjoy the things. Is it gonna take you longer? Obviously, yes. Are you gonna see the same things that the people who did it from border to border saw? Yep, you are. The, the sites and monuments on the trail don't change if you're only doing 10 mile days for 100 miles or doing 20 mile days for 2,650 miles. <laughs> There's still Eagle Rock. There's still this and that site and this place and those things still exist. Um, 
and there's absolutely no law whatsoever anywhere. Uh, now, is it a badge of honor to say I'm a through hiker? I walked border to border on such and such trail in as continuous as I could, you know, not counting trail closures and, and stuff. And there's those every year. Uh, um, yeah, it is a badge of honor. And as long as people aren't wearing it like an a-hole, and I haven't seen too many who do that. Um, that's, that's great. It, it, it's, an, it's an amazing accomplishment. And so they should be proud of what they've done. Um, just because they did it, does that mean everybody can? No. And that's the thing is... It, it's it's hard because you want to say, oh, you know, you hold people up. So-and-so did it, therefore. Okay, but that's the thing is you have to look at what is possible. Almost anything is possible. It is possible that right now I'll all of a sudden have the ability to do major mathematical equations in my head without even a piece of paper and just figure them out. Yeah, it's possible. Is it likely? No, it is not likely. And you can't plan for things that are possible you should be planning for things that are likely and you do research to figure that out is it possible for me to do the entire pct absolutely i have family support i am not in the worst shape uh, that i've ever been in i'm in better shape than some others i've seen start the trail and do pretty well on the trail so yeah it is possible is it likely no because of certain other things and it's not just physical shape everyone knows that the trail is also a huge amount mental and it's just I don't want to be away for that long I want to be with my family and enjoy things um, and so I look around and hey what do you know there's different ways to do this trail I don't have to do it that way just because so-and-so did and this person did just because a bunch of people do it every year you know what? There's also a bunch of people doing it the other way. Sections, little chunks here and there. And it's just as legitimate. It's just as fun. Step one, fun. So there it is, research. Don't just fall into the assumption that there's just this one way. Look around, find out, check things. Do your research. Now, yes, there are some spots, like say Yosemite Half Dome. There's only one way you're gonna get up to the top of Half Dome. You gotta get a permit from the National Park Service. You gotta go up the cable route. That's it. You can't do that. You don't know how to do that. You don't think you can physically handle that. Then I guess you're not gonna do Half Dome because that's the only way you can do it. Bummer, but that's just the reality of it. And that's why you research. But do you look at 2,650 miles of PCT and think, impossible? No, it's not. Not if you do it a little bit at a time. Maybe for you it's impossible. Maybe even for me it's impossible to do it all in one big fell swoop, five months on the trail, go. Yeah, maybe that's not going to work. Okay, and that's okay. Who cares? You can still do the trail. You just do it your way and have fun doing it. So there it is. That's my three steps to my hiker mindset that I now have. Have fun, be realistic, research. FRR, fun, realistic research. Um, to see the different ways to, to do things. So that's it. Agree or disagree, have your own anecdotal stories about how you thought you couldn't do something but did do it or how you tried to do something and it just didn't work out and it made you realize hey i gotta do this a different way um let me know as usual at hiking for health ca at gmail.com or of course the comments below comment to me on instagram comment to me on patreon when i posted there as always thank you very much for watching hiker homily and the other stuff on my channel i'll catch you next time